James Rodriguez, Kylie Minogue, Edison Cavani, Jennifer Aniston, Jose Marino and Shirley from EastEnders. Three signings I think Manchester United should be making this week and three women over 40 I wouldn't mind taking to Nando's. Although Kylie, you can jury by my poll any day of the week. Let's fly into it then. It's the last week of the transfer window. One of the most disappointing we've ever seen. I've got a lovely clip for you coming up after the Draughty Devil. Don't miss that. But let's fly into it. James Rodriguez linked to Manchester United. Not been playing that much for Real Madrid recently. Another Real Madrid. Real Madrid reject that I I don't really think we should be taking. He's not that quick. He's another sort of matter thing. We need pace. But a lot of Manchester United fans would like him at the club, so we will discuss him. Um, probably going to cost around £50 million. His contract is up in 2020, so that sort of feeds in with there. We've also got Edward Wood in charge, who overpays and undersells. But Rodriguez, this season, if you look at what he's been doing, um, he's 24 years of age. He's going to be 25 in the summer, I believe. He's scored. Um, he's, he's, he's played 13 games, he's scored three goals, and he's got six assists, which for Real Madrid, it's always very difficult to gauge because it's a bit like a 16-year-old team playing against a group of kids, a group of toddlers. So you should have fantastic stats, but he's not been playing that much. He's obviously got Bale and, and Ronaldo and the likes of that ahead of him. Um, he wasn't a player when he was at he was at Porto, wasn't he? He was at one of the Portuguese teams. Who I actually I I don't rate the Portuguese league. I know Ronaldo came from there, but I don't. I, he's not the sort of player I would I would want at Manchester United. Is what I'm saying. Give us your thoughts though. I, I think for his contract, his price, and most importantly, his pace is not what we need. We need pacey players. Um, moving on to our next target then, Kylie Minogue. Statistics. She's um, she's five foot two. 32 B Cup and 102 pounds. Probably going to cost us around about 20 million pounds. Sorry, I'm getting. Sorry, I don't know what I'm getting into there. I'm getting into my old uh, my uh, women over 40. Edison Cavani. Edison Cavani. Then at PSG, he is again not somebody I would take at Manchester United. I don't rate him. I think he's another Falcao in the Premier League. I think he does well in leagues that aren't that good. Um, he was at Lazio, wasn't he? Serie A. Was it Lazio? Definitely in, in the Italian league. A league I don't rate. He's now in the French league. I don't rate him there. I've seen him a few times for Uruguay, a couple of times against England. I don't rate him. He's a, he's a goal scorer, but we need more than that. You know, we, we need a Lukaku sort of player who's quick, powerful, strong, hold the ball up. Premier League proven is something I will keep saying. Why do we keep looking at these... They're not even Galacticos. Real Madrid or Barcelona won't go for them. They're like second stage Galacticos. Like you sign a Cavani and it, and, it, and, it, and it pulls the wool over the fans' eyes. I don't think any of us are that stupid anymore. And it certainly isn't the sort of player that I would want at Manchester United. Cavani is touching on 30. He's coming up for 29. Um, contract's up in 2018. So, yeah, he'd probably be a bit cheaper. I think he'd be about £40 million. Pounds. 27 games this season, 13 goals, 2 assists. So he's around 1 goal in 2, which in the French League isn't actually that good good for 40 million pounds he's not what i want he's not what i want at all if we want a striker 40 million pounds i know it probably wouldn't get as lukaku now but there are players out there that i would rather we went for young up and coming again pacey players premier league proven again so not no not for me not for rodriguez not for cavani jose Mourinho. we're touching on him it's the last week of the transfer window lou van hell should have been sacked at christmas long long before that i wanted him gone i just want to feed some stats in here because i'm not i wasn't sure about jose Mourinho at christmas but i think we, we we've christmas was a different time obviously it was in december but we were in a different situation i was saying sack lou van hell now we can still rescue fourth place we could even do a title charge the way we're in now five points off spurs ten points off leicester we are up against fourth. Fourth place will be miraculous from here. It can be done, but it will take a huge effort. It will take a sacking of the manager, and it will take buying some players in this last week. Do I think it will happen? I hope it will happen, but the board, they should have done it at Christmas, so why would they do it now? Jose Marino, I think because of the situation we are in, he's available. We are in the last chance saloon. At Christmas, maybe we could have been selective. We are now... We've got to do it. So I would do it. I would do Jason Mourinho, not in the literal sense. And the reason I would go for him is I just want to dispel a few myths. Lou Van Hel has had 61 games, Premier League games we're talking, for Manchester United. He has won 30 of those, so he's less than a 50% win rate. And his goals to game ratio is around 1.5, which is actually probably a lot of that comes from last season, not this season. It's been a diabolical this season.
Sir Alex Ferguson, as Manchester United manager, he managed about a million games, but uh, his win rate was 65%, probably the best manager there's ever been in the world, and he was averaging around two goals a game. Chelsea manager, obviously Jose Mourinho, we're talking Premier League record here, it's much better if you take into all his other clubs like Inter, Real Madrid and uh, Porto, but just exclusively Premier League, his win ratio is better, better than Sir Alex Ferguson's, it's 66%. His goals to game ratio, 1.8. So it's close to Sir Alex Ferguson's at two a game and way better than 1.5 a game that you get with Louis van Gaal. Jose Mourinho, where, why doubt him? We are a club on our knees and we need to get back. He's a proven Premier League manager, especially in the first 12 months. First 12 to 18, 12 months to 24 months. First two years, effectively, for those who don't like decimal. Um, so he will come in and we will win the league. And we'll certainly be in a better position than we are now. The football will be better. Do the deal. Do the deal. And I tell you what, if you're a Man United fan who, are, who, who is not sure about it, look at where we are. Watch our games and see where we are. This is a decision. We, we need to make it now. It needs to be done. And um, th that's all I've got to say. I wasn't sure about Jose Mourinho. I still am. But I think the club, the board are so culpable. I mean, two disastrous appointments in Moyes and Louis van Gaal. Don't get it at all. They've got to make the change now. So my signing of the week is Jose Mourinho. And that's what I'm going to say. Um, Rodriguez Cavani, no. Get Mourinho in. And you know what? We won't be talking about Cavani and Rodriguez if we get Mourinho in. We'll be back on the top shelf and we'll be making signings again. So um, I'd be happy about that 100%. Because it's a myth under Louis van Gaal. The youth is doing bad with 30 points off uh, their under 18s, 30 points off Man City's under 18s in the bottom two. We got destroyed, ironically, by Chelsea 5 1 at home in the FA Youth Club. So that youth is a myth. The restructure is a myth. The football philosophy is a myth. He's got to go. And I don't, you know, we've, we may as well just try something totally different. And I think Jose Marino would be that. It's got to be that or Giggs in charge with Sir Alex Ferguson really in charge behind him. But that's my thought. Over to the Draughty Devil then. He's got a few more transfer targets for you. I'll be back with this special little clip for you coming up. So do keep tuned for that. Over to the Draughty Devil. I would have had a little joke for you, Draughty, but I've got het up about Louis van Hal again. Um, I know you're Louis van Hal in. Over to you. Yes, thank you, Goldbridge. And with Manchester United a lot like a eunuch trying to find its own penis, we desperately need a brand new striker because, let's face it, Wayne Rooney is not coming back, people. He had a short spell. Everyone thought, hey, he's back. It's not happening. It is not happening. So in the Bundesliga for FSV Mainz is 23-year-old Japanese striker Yoshinori Muto. Now, could he be the answer? Could he be the striker that'll bang in all the goals and get us back to fourth place? I seriously have my doubts. It's almost like another Shinji Kagawa situation where we are purely looking at a Japanese player to appease the Asian markets. But Muto could have, you know, his move could be good for Manchester United in terms of he would get us a few goals and probably give us a few strike options up front. The papers have been linked with him, but to be honest, I hope we don't move for him. I, I don't see too much in it. But a player I do see a lot in is Renato Sanchez. Now, if you cast your minds back over to Christmas when we were going on about Gonzalo Juárez of Benfica, Renato Sanchez is the yin to his yang. It's another Cristiano Ronaldo and Nani situation. Two very, very promising young players playing for the same club in Portugal. But which one is the golden goose and which one is the ugly duckling? Well, last time, Nani was the ugly duckling. So I'm going to pip for Renato Sanchez. Sanchez seems to have the drive and determination and the skills required to be a success in Manchester United. Anyway, some say his buttocks are webbed and that he has 12 toes on each foot. All we know is he's called Mark Goldbridge. Back over to you in the studio. Thanks to the Draughty Devil there. Fantastic targets as per usual. More of that back next week. Red Rumours every Monday at four o'clock please do like the video it makes such a difference to us to, to know that you enjoy it so just drop a like it's an easy little tick please do that for us now for a little treat i'd love to be saying on our out section this week fellaini's going to ac milan apparently they've been chasing him for 20 million pounds you don't need to chase him we're all we'll all sit down on him and you can have him for free so that deal can still be done there's a week left if any ac milan fans or, or board members are watching that can be arranged for free. In fact, I'll, I'll even pay you, so come and sort us out. But I don't think anyone's leaving Manchester United. We've got so many injury problems. So I'm not going to lie to you and start saying all oh, matters going or anything like that. And I'd love to say Fellaini's going. So what I thought I'd discuss this week is um, 
It's been a terrible transfer window, right up there with the terrible football we're getting. It's a bad time for Manchester United fans. So I thought, I'll tell you what, let's go back in time to a time that was good. And I was thinking, what was my favourite transfer window? 1996. Cantona just coming back from his ban. We won the double. It was a nice year, Euro 96. Even I even liked England then. So it's a long time ago, coming up for 20 years now. So um, I thought, let's go back to 20... Well, I've got a video for you. Let's go back to 1996 and Mini Mark. Blah, 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 blah. Hi, I'm Mark Goldbridge and welcome along to Soccerbox TV. So let's fly straight into it then. Who do I want to see Manchester United sign this summer? Well, certainly not Gareth Southgate. I mean, why Terry Venables is taking him, of all people, to the Euros, I'll never, ever understand. Who I do want at Manchester United, though, is Alan Shearer of Blackburn Rovers and Teddy Sheringham of Tottenham Hotspur. I feel that we need someone to help Eric Cantona and support him, and someone to keep a bit of pressure on him, as he's recently had eight months out and is struggling with form and fitness lately. A new striker is an absolute must. Andy Cole, let's be honest, why is the manager playing Andy Cole? He's absolutely useless. I feel about 12 million could get us Shearer, and I feel about 8 million, 8 million to 9 million perhaps could get us Teddy Sheringham. I do not want that mouthy Kevin Keegan getting hold of Alan Shearer. There's rumours flying around that they want him as well. The Magpies, we can't let the Magpies have Alan Shearer. A new striker's an absolute must, and I feel if we miss out on Shearer, I feel that it's sack the board time. Don't even get me started on Lee Sharp. He's an absolute tree in midfield and I don't understand why the manager persists to keep playing him all the time. But let's go back to it though. Alan Shearer and uh, Teddy Sheringham are uh, absolute musts this summer. We need a new striker. Andy Cole's useless. Canton are struggling with form. And if we want to compete at the highest level this season, we definitely need a new striker. Thanks, Mini Mark. Might get more from you in the future. I've got some old video clips we can watch. Uh, wasn't quite right about Andy Cole, was I? But I'm normally right, so we'll give you that one. But thanks, everybody, for watching. It, it is Red Room, as it is here every Monday. It is a difficult time for Manchester United fans, but I think these shows and the United Stand and all you lot getting involved is keeping us all sane. So thanks, everybody, for watching. Like the video. Subscribe to the United Stand if you're new to it. Obviously, we do the live match reaction straight after. We've got Sunday Night Live. We've got Red Room, as every Monday. And we've got our preview shows as well so there's lots of content to get involved with please do keep, do keep getting involved um thanks for watching and i'll see you again very soon the united stand am i still live let's carry on hey thanks for watching and if you enjoyed the show just hit that like button below it really really does help us out and don't forget to subscribe to the united stand youtube channel as well as that, we've also just launched the United Stand Extra Time, where there's going to be loads of bonus content that you guys haven't seen before. There's plenty of ways to get involved, so yeah, just hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, and have a great week.